Good people, I'm Dmitri, and right now all the craze is about lightweight FPS mice, but let's not forget about the heavyweight options that still matter, and I have exactly that, the ROG Chakra. Eber, to make sure I pronounce the name properly, Eber sent me a recording on how to pronounce the name correctly. Chakram. Thanks, buddy. This mouse is absolutely loaded with features, and after using it for about a week, it is an easy recommendation. It has a perfect place on the market in 2020, and it's actually a really good alternative to the Razer and Logitech options because of the joystick and because of the hot swappable switches. Pretty cool. So the first thing I want to get off my chest is this conversation about the weight. And I feel like it's actually an advantage for brands that release heavyweight mice because the lightweight section is getting so saturated that anything that's slightly heavy stands out. And even though the Chakram is slightly heavier versus the G502 Lightspeed Wireless and the Razer Basilisk Ultimate, it still keeps a distance from the really chunky productivity mice like the MX Master 2S. And price-wise, it is also slightly more versus the G502 Wireless and the Razer Basilisk Ultimate, but I still think it's fairly competitive in the grand scheme of best wireless options available. The included accessories are absolutely loaded. You get a pouch, a sticker, USB-C cable, compartment with extra switches, and joystick heads and this transparent custom badge that replaces the default RGB logo. I guess you can draw on this or maybe put a sticker on it, but instructions unclear. I really like the see-through top surface for extra diffusion of all that beautiful even lighting, especially right below the front triggers, and I think this texture will fare well over time. The Type-C connector is unrestricted at the front, and as far as I'm aware, this is the first mouse that has an equivalent of fast charging, where you can charge 12 hours of battery in just 15 minutes over a USB 3 connection. Now total runtime is rated at 79 hours, which is awesome, and the mouse obviously goes to sleep when an idle to save on battery life, so this is minimum a full week usage wireless mouse uh, over a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle that by the way tucks inside the body for safe travels. The mouse also has Qi charging, which is awesome if you have one available on your desk. Charge the mouse that way without needing to plug it in and it also has Bluetooth connectivity, which is probably why the mouse is slightly heavier versus the competition. As for the shape, it is a large mouse that I find very comfortable to grip, and it has enough length for massive hands too. As you can see, I'm mainly gripping the back with my fingertip style. Uh, claw and full palm grip should satisfy too, but I still prefer the slightly slimmer basilisk shape over the ROG. The textured sides are also not as grippy as on Razer, but I've had no issues with control, and the mouse stays locked in my grip. My only complaint with the button layout is the placement of that joystick as it's too far forward for my thumb and I need to basically readjust my entire grip to reach it. As for functionality of the joystick, you can program it to full 360 degree analog movement or digital movement, which is quite unique for a mouse, but I just couldn't bring myself to use this joystick even for third person uh, games because it's a bit unnatural and also the fact that it's too far away from my thumb so it's not an exactly comfortable place for me to utilize the thumb and the joystick. It also only works through Steam once you set up the controller configuration so that's fine anything that launches through Steam the joystick is recognized uh, for the analog controls but if I launch into Red Dead Redemption 2 through the uh, other launcher it doesn't work. By the way, the joystick is also fully removable and can be extended with a slightly longer stem. And something else important to mention is that the joystick is disabled in Bluetooth mode. So what I find more interesting as a feature on this mouse are the swappable arm run switches. You simply remove the primary triggers, which are magnetic, you pull out the switch and replace with whatever you have available. The blue ones have the sharper and more tactile actuation versus more travel and softer feeling beige switches. You can also mix and match and even install your own Omron switches, and I'm not sure how you feel about this, but this might be the next cool thing for gaming mice. Like the next level of customization for mice just like we have with keyboards. I don't know, we'll see. It is a standard pin plunger design, so different micro switches will work, and I've tested some of the switches that I actually got from Omron in Japan, no issues here. Just make sure the pin layout matches to the default micro switches that are included with the mouse, and not something like this that you can find on Amazon that looks similar, but it would not fit.
And so finally, let's talk about gaming as the sensor is top of the line up to 16,000 DPI. And I found it actually quite pleasant in games like EFT where character movement has weight. So your turn speed and walking speed are all affected by the gear you wear. And despite the 120 gram body, I had good control with finding targets and aim correction. But jumping into this workshop map in CSGO, it was quite challenging as you keep flicking the mouse across the screen. So my aim wasn't bad, but my wrist was not used to something this heavy. For FPS, I still go back to the very light MM711 for that exact reason, but the Chakram is still a fantastic performer and I even played at my usual DPI of 800 without any issues. Now where the stability and added weight might be advantageous are all the adventure games and strategy games where featherlight mice simply have no benefit. And this means that ASUS is still catering to those who prefer the larger mouse format with the extra weight and a really loaded feature set. I have nothing special to say about the driver software, except we only have three profiles with all the usual button mapping and lighting options, plus two liftoff distance adjustments and joystick configuration that doesn't really reflect in-game movement anyway. The joystick here is the most disappointing part because it's only recognized through Steam and it's way too far forward for my thumb, therefore I can't comfortably grip the mouse and use the joystick properly. Perhaps if it was right below the browser buttons, I would have more luck. And I see this mouse as something that encourages innovation that will hopefully observe in future releases. And I'm quite surprised that ASUS was able to deliver a mouse that competes with the likes of Razer and Logitech, which are established players in this space. But let me know what you think of the RG Chakram in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video. Chakram. Thank you.